I'm Katie. I'm Becca. Welcome to Cooped Up Cooking with Katie and Becca. Becca. Hi, everybody. Hi, Instagram friends. Hi, Facebook friends. We've missed you guys. We took uh, the weekend off for Mother's Day, but we're back. Hi, Christos. Hi, Shannon. Hi. Christo saying tie dye again. No, Hi everybody. I just wanted to welcome our director, our guest director, joining us from Sherman Oaks, California, Rita Drucker. Hi everybody. Happy to be back. I hope everyone had a wonderful Mother's Day. I know I did. And I was just thinking about the theme for today, thinking about the tropics, <laughs> thinking about how we all would love to escape to a tropical vacation. Uh, we can't do that right now, so we're going to bring the tropics. To you with some delicious recipes. We're making pineapple fried rice, which I know is Mima's favorite if you're watching Mima, along with coconut shrimp. Who doesn't love coconut? Round of applause for coconut shrimp. Woo! <laughs> also, crab rangoon. Has anyone heard of crab rangoon? What is a rangoon? I don't know. I think I got that in college. I know. I think you gave it to me. Anyway, <laughs> crab rangoon is a delicious. Cream cheese, crab, appetizer, much like cream cheese wontons. We'll talk all about the history behind that in a couple of minutes. Oh, hi, Alex Bryant. Thanks for joining. Good to see you guys again. Of course, today we have some exciting giveaways. We're giving away a copy of my Chinese cookbook, Everyday Chinese Cooking. Uh, anybody that comments, we're going to just put you into a random pile, and we're going to pick a lucky winner today, along with... A sampler pack of tea drops. This is my friend's company, Sashi Chandran. Tea drops are amazing. They're basically these organic tea discs. Where are these ones? This is a cit citrus ginger we're these drinking are today. They're shaped, this one's shaped like a flower. And what's so amazing is these organic tea drops, they dissolve right into the water so you don't need. A tea bag. It's tea magic, you guys. So please check out myteadrop.com. We will be giving away a sampler box of the tea drops and we're giving away a copy of my Chinese cookbook, okay? So, uh, hey Rita, do we have any friends joining us yet? Rita. Rita's asleep at the wheel. <laughs> it's okay. I am, I'm sorry, I need it. I'm so sorry, everybody. Technical difficulties caused by me. Mm. We have Chris and your sister, Laura Chen. Hi, Laura. Hi, Chris. So we're drinking the citrus ginger tea drops today. It's so refreshing and delicious and quite tropical, right? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay, look who guys. joined. Raghavan. Hi, Raghavan from Minneapolis. You guys, Raghavan Ayer, I just wanted to show you that he is a very renowned Indian chef. He's authored many cookbooks. He's appeared in the New York Times. He's won James Beard Awards. I mean, he's the real deal, you guys. He wrote the foreword for my cookbook, which we're giving away today. Hi, Raghavan. Oh, Mima's joined us. Hi, Mima. All right, we're gonna get started today with our coconut shrimp. <clears throat> I started with some large shrimp that we just got at Costco. It was peeled and deveined. Much less work, you guys. We're leaving the tail on because I think it looks pretty for coconut shrimp. So we just thawed the shrimp, we patted it dry with some paper towels, okay? Next. Oops, sorry. Production assistant, please give me some assistance. All right, we're gonna start with some egg whites and also some beer. And we're going to pour it into a bowl. Why did I get to see? <laughs> we're pouring the beer and the egg whites into a bowl. And Becca's just gonna whisk this together. And the reason we're using beer is because it makes for a really, really crispy and fluffy coconut shrimp. You nice. often use beer in tempura batter as well for this reason. Hi, Christos was there up at Costco. TP. Okay. Oh, was there TP? Toilet, toilet paper. paper. Oh, toilet paper. Yeah, there was tons of it. Tons of toilet paper, at least at the Costco near our house where we're hunkering down at our cabin home. Okay, next. We have in here, what do we have in here, Becca? Flour and salt. No, cornstarch. Corn starch we have some cornstarch <laughs> and a bit of salt. The cornstarch is gonna make a nice crunchy exterior to the coconut shrimp. 
Then lastly we have coconut. Shredded sweetened coconut. Alright? So what we're gonna do is we're going to dip the shrimp first into the egg white beer mixture and then we're gonna dredge it in the cornstarch. What does the beer do? Is it just a flavoring or what does it do? If you were listening to me earlier, you would have learned that the beer <laughs> aerates. The Sorry, water. I was busy filming uh, uh, some something. I can stop doing that now. And, um, oh, makes it nice and delicious and crispy. So as oh. you can see, first we. That's great, the, but what does the beer do? The egg white beer mixture, then the cornstarch, followed by the coconut. You see. What if you just dip it in be all in beer? No, I think that would just have a whole college experience. <laughs> so we just, uh, I had this oil going. So we're going to be uh, deep frying the shrimp. So this is slightly more indulgent than other uh, appetizers that we make. Okay. But you know what? Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Not yet. Right here. Um, Becca's going to go ahead and continue dipping the shrimp in the egg white beer mixture, followed by dredging it in the cornstarch, followed by dipping it in some sweetened um coconut you see here now hey Katie. yes yes i'm so sorry to interrupt your 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 stream here but i have a question regarding beer okay it's a popular i'm happy subject. to answer any liquor related <laughs> questions because it's one o'clock so, people Woo. yes if, if you don't like beer if you don't want beer if you can't drink beer because perhaps you're underage can you use a like soda water or is there any other alternative? Yeah, that's a great question. I would just substitute with some club soda. Much like tempura batter, you can substitute beer out with club soda. Because you really want those bubbles to make a really light, crispy, fluffy batter. Okay? Excellent. All right, now let's just talk about deep frying. Some people are afraid of deep frying. No need to be afraid, but I do recommend either either using vegetable oil or corn oil for deep frying because they have very high smoke points. Definitely do not use olive oil if you're going to deep fry. You could also use um, some canola oil. So you want to get it nice and hot. What happens if at first you don't succeed? Fry, fry again. <laughs> All right, now I'm just going to add our shrimp to the oil. Now we just make sure we sit back a bit, okay? And whenever you're deep frying, you want to make sure that you're at the ready with a, pa a pan and some paper towel, okay? Because you want it to absorb the excess grease. See here. Now, does anybody know? Oh, here we go. Hold on. Oh, okay. Now, you want to make sure that your oil is not too hot or else it can blacken. <laughs> All right, we're just going to do this one more time because my oil was, see, this is live TV, you guys. <laughs> this is live TV. So wait, so we're what do you, if over. at first you don't succeed? All right, if at first you don't succeed, fry, cool, fry again. Cool down your oil and fry, cool fry again. Oil. Here we go. Let's you know, <laughs> let me tell you something. I've known you for a long time. It's pretty hard for you to cool down your oil. <laughs> Here we go. Is it watching? I know, I'm watching. Becca's saying you gotta watch that mommy because she's so smart. Hey, Katie, okay, yes. we have a question. Oh, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Uh, question for Misty Jane Shannon, who, by the way, is laughing at you. Uh, with you guys, not at you. Hi, Misty uh, Jane. Is know, Either way. What about avocado oil? Ooh, I haven't tried that yeah. yet. But I've, I've heard that people have uh, had some pretty good success with it. With other. Okay. Becca, keep doing the shrimp. It's, it's, uh... Oh. oh, yes. Okay. All right. Okay, excellent question. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm having a little black and shrimp situation here. But that's okay. That's all right. Okay, let me put this aside. And we're going to move on to the crab rangoon. Hey, it's fine. Okay. All right, let's just take a break from the shrimp for a moment. So our oil can, yes, Becca can wash her hands. That is fine. Okay. All right, let's move on to the crab rangoon. Okay, we start with some softened cream cheese. So you, mount, you want to make sure your cream cheese is at room temperature. And then to this, I'm just adding some canned crab meat. You could also use some lump crab meat. 
Okay, and then I'm just going to have that back up. Mix this all together along with some garlic salt. Next, we're going to use some wonton skins. Now you can find these at any grocery store. They're usually uh, placed by the tofu section. Okay, and what's great about these is you can just put them in the freezer and, and have them on hand for whatever you need. Wontons, pot stickers, shumai, whatever you'd like, okay? Next. Oh, Becca, you're getting some props on your shirt. Daddy got it for me. Where did he get did it? Did I? At Lockin. At lock What's Lockin? Don't know. Ask Daddy. <laughs> I, know, I know what it is. What's Lockin? I don't know the definition. Okay. I'm taking a square wonton wrapper and I'm just going to place them on the board like so. There we go. Now my mother taught me how to make wontons and dumplings and crab rangoo by taking the skins and placing them on the board like so because it's a lot more efficient so you're not making one cream cheese wonton at a time. Now obviously, if you don't want the crab, just omit the crab and just do cream cheese and garlic salt. So Becca's just going to brush the edges here like so. Okay, Rita, do we have any new friends joining us? We do. We have Daniel Corteau. Hi, Daniel Corteau from Washburn High School. And Steve Steve. Hi, Steve. Michael Harris just joined. Hi, Michael Harris. And say hello to Garrett Lyons. Hey, Garrett Lyons. And hi, Hollywood 469, a botanical chef. Thanks so much for joining us. Okay, ready? Now, we're just going to take about a teaspoon of our filling and place it in the center of the wrapper. Okay? Can, oh, can you move Good that job. can you move that spatula thing? Sure. Good job. Now I'm just gonna turn this back on and then let me show you how to shape them. So we create a triangle. You see that? Hi Mima, we miss you too. Hollywood 469, are you enjoying your tea drops? Because I know I'm enjoying my tea drops this very minute. Okay, we make a triangle, then I'm just going to moisten the, the edge, and then I'm gonna fold the two corners down to make a little jacket. Doesn't that look cute, you guys? And then it puffs up. Now, if you don't feel like making this particular shape, you can just make a triangle, it's totally fine. Oh yes, okay. All right, so while yeah. Beth is making these, I'm just gonna strain our oil. <laughs> okay. okay, Becca's gonna keep making those. But I also think while Becca makes those, she's gonna do a dance break on her own. Are you no. ready? Yeah, come what? on. What? <gasps> no! What? Oh, you're tick not doing tock, the dance tick tock. Today, Becca's doing the dance on her own. Woo <laughs> go ahead, ready? And you're ready to say go. Feeling good. I'm feeling good. <laughs> like I should. Winning the blue walk around the neighborhood. Feeling blessed. Never stressed. I hope, I hope Miss Tony's not watching. Doing the funky chicken. Is this is this song uh, family friendly? Is this? Some cream cheese puffs with crab ready to go. I'm gonna put them in our oil. Let me grab some tongs. Hey, Phil Dominguez. Hey, Phil Dominguez. How was Bodhi's birthday? Saw you go there. <laughs> All right. 
right, good job, Becca. Here we go. Now, since we're giving away a copy of my cookbook and a tea job sampler set, I'd like everyone to enter right now. What is your favorite Asian appetizer? Please enter your answers now. Can't win if you don't comment, you folks. Can't win unless you comment. All right, now you want to put these in the oil till they're nice and golden brown, just like oh, yeah. so. You look see at that? that. Does, doesn't that look delicious, you guys? Woo! That looks so good. Okay. And if they happen to come apart while they're frying, that's totally fine, no problem. <laughs> oh. Okay. So you want to have... Mima says crab wontons. Crab wontons. This is what we're making, Mima, is crab wontons. I think you knew that, but I know you love it, right? Egg tart. Oh, hey, May. May oh, Hollywood loves wontons anything, anything with cream cheese. So if you're watching and you live in Minnesota, you know that my mother invented cream cheese pops, and this was actually documentary, documented in City Pages, Minneapolis. Because my mother, when she started her first restaurant, she made crab wontons, and it was so crazy busy at her restaurant chain. She was just like, I'm just going to take out the crab. And you know what? Honestly, no one seemed to care or, or, or say anything. So that is why cream cheese puffs today have become so popular all over the world. Don't you think? I think so. Okay. So once again, we just get these nice and golden brown. Oh, Mima says, these are my favorite, and these are my fave, and your egg roll, and your egg roll. Oh, thanks, Mima. Hi, Sylvia Agave. Hey, Sylvia Agave, thanks for joining. Uh, sorry we didn't have a show on Sunday, but please join us next Sunday, where we'll be giving away a sampler pack of Sylvia Agave. Okay, good job, Becca. Thank you. Very good. Now, can you grab me a plate, please? A black one from there is fine. Okay, as you can see here, it only takes about a minute to fry these beautiful crab wontons. Thank you, Vanna White. Very nice. Now, Becca, can you go ahead and plate those? So, you guys, we're going through withdrawals. So, Via, I got, you know, we've been going through withdrawals as well, but we're I have happy. to tell you that we've used We've also been that. going through a lot we've of Sevilla agave. Half of the cases Sevilla agave you sent us because it's so delicious, seriously, especially oh, for Mother's Day. Withdrawal. Okay. Uh, Matthew, can you explain what withdrawals are, Rebecca? Withdrawals is when you uh, when you're missing something very much. Yes. You get withdrawal. Yes, oh, I, I feel okay. That. I want everyone. Hmm. Thank you. They're yeah, just like score. Becca, you're how you're feeling about going to school every day, like you used to. You're having withdrawals, aren't you? This is the only time I miss school. Yeah. I would like. Oh, look at our beautiful crab rangoon right here. We're just going to set this aside for the moment. Since we're talking about withdrawals, I would like everyone right now to comment in the comment section, what are you experiencing in terms of withdrawals? I know for me, it's definitely a manicure and a root touch up. <laughs> okay. Enter your answers now, you guys. Okay. I'm going to put this filling aside. Now, Mike, let's go back to our shrimp because we had to do a little do over. I think we all know what that's like. Sometimes in life, you have to do a little do-over. You know what I mean? Okay, so let's start over. We're going to add the shrimp. Okay. okay. If you're just joining us now, my friends, we have a mixture of beer and egg whites. Oh. Becca is going to dip shrimp you into the beer have and egg whites. I withdrawal of seeing my, her friends. I know. We have a withdrawal of seeing you too, Mima. Okay. Now she's going to dredge it in some cornstarch and salt. Then... <laughs> into some shredded coconut. Matthew, what are you laughing about? What's that? What are you laughing about? Oh, uh, a funny comment. Okay. Hey, Rita, any new friends or comments on the Facebook side? I see the Instagram quite talkative. Facebook, not so much. Yeah. No, Facebook is talkative. I'm just being very sensitive, not interrupting your mojo here. Okay. But if you have some great answers around your question about your favorite um, appetizer, and some of them are your uh, recipes. And Po says she loves your honey honey sriracha lollipop. Oh, hey, Ann Po. And Nicole Hersey Saint says she loves your pineapple fried rice. Oh, hi, Nicole. Are you there with Spencer and Paige? We 
have also a nomination for shrimp toast Ooh. and Korean stupid pancakes. Ooh, nice. Now, now, who said shrimp toast? Was that someone from Minnesota? That was Philip Camp. That was who? Philip Camp. Oh, hi, Philip Camp. All right, we'd like to go to your camp. Okay, oh, ready? So we just. So nice. All right, let's. No, just a second. So now we're going to refry our shrimp. But uh, Nicole, Nicole said that. What she misses, what she's having withdrawals is going out to a restaurant. You know what? I definitely feel you because I would very much like to go to a restaurant. However, I do feel like this time has forced us to eat together as a family, right? During mealtime, which we were so rushed before with soccer. I mean, what am I talking about? No soccer. With baseball. No, <laughs> with not dance, soccer. With music, with so many activities. Okay. I hope that you two have experienced some silver linings hey, don't put your face so close through this whole experience. Okay. All right, here we go. Becca, can you tell everybody what you think a silver lining has been through this experience? Um, it's spending time with your family. Oh, yeah. Sure. And That's I, fun. I just wanted to uh, give a shout out to May Chandra, and I saw that you were able to see your granddaughter over the weekend, which is so amazing because you all tested negative for COVID and I think that's so beautiful and congratulations that you got to see her. She's so, so cute. Okay, and I got to Yay! I got to cater her christening. Yay! All right. Yay! All right. See? Fry, fry again. Just be patient and things will work out. <laughs> yeah! All right, now we're just deep frying these beautiful coconut shrimp in our vegetable oil at about 350 degrees. Okay, here we go. Ooh, that looks good. A taste of the tropics, you guys. Woohoo! Now all we need is a margarita, and then we'll be in. Margarita? Margarita, though. I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah, I knew. All right, here we go. Now let's grab our other plate. You can make a one, mini one. Yeah. Thank you. Can you grab the other plate, please? Other plate. Okay, two are delicious crab rangoon, another delicious appetizer. I forgot to, to talk about the trivia behind crab rangoon and uh, I don't think rangoon is an actual word but it's a made-up word but that's okay. Crab rangoon, it is said, was invented in the 1950s at a famous Polynesian restaurant in San Francisco. Can anybody guess the name of the Polynesian restaurant? Please enter your answers now. Okay, to this I'm just going to add. So we're gonna have a delicious poople platter of our own. Well, that was in, what about raffles in uh, Bangkok? What was in, something in, was invented there? That was a, a Singapore sling. Oh, Singapore sling. That's right. Matthew was confusing his Polynesian <laughs> trivia. Okay, all right. Now, now we have our delicious crab rangoon along with our Whoa. coconut shrimp. Now Becca's gonna work on the sauce. We're gonna use the sauce for both dishes. She's just going to add some apricot jam. Apricot jam, or you could use uh, orange marmalade. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, we have some answers here. Let's see. Mima says Trader Vix. May Chandra says Vix. They're just on a first name basis. Anybody on Facebook? Have they answered it? Entered an answer? No, but everyone's commenting on the Mount Watering recipe today uh, from Keith Bryan. And Donald Mitchell says, Becca, keep sure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. To the uh, apricot preserves, we have we have some minced fresh ginger. You could use uh, ginger powder in this recipe, but I think fresh ginger is always best along with Dijon mustard. Dijon mustard. Very good. And then what do we have? Some lime juice. Fresh squeezed lime juice. Now if you now if you wanted to, you could uh, maybe use half of the uh, marmalade or apricot preserves and add some sevilla agave. Don't you think? Yeah. All right. Now Becca's gonna uh, put this over here on the stove. We're gonna bring all these sauce ingredients to a low boil and she's gonna just stir it and simmer it. Well, I move on to our pineapple fried rice.
Now, if you're a lover of pineapple fried rice out there, if you're a lover of pineapple fried rice, I'd love you to give me a thumbs up or a heart emoji. Can I see it? Can I see it? Let's see it. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys. So what goes into pineapple fried rice is obviously rice. Can I spare it? Yes, please. You could use brown rice. You could use quinoa. You could use cauliflower rice, which is I know Mima's favorite. And then we have some fresh pineapple cubes. And what I did earlier is I took a whole pineapple, I cut it in half, and then I scooped out all the pineapple flesh. And we're gonna actually serve this in a pineapple, which is so cool, I love it. I mean, you'll be the talk of the town the next time you bring this to a gathering in 2022. No, I'm just kidding, hopefully soon, okay. Next we also have some thawed frozen peas. We have some scrambled eggs that also go into the fried rice. I scrambled these in advance and then we'll be just putting them back into the dish. Mage Chandran wants to know, does it have to be fresh pineapple? You know what, you could use frozen pineapple, you could use pineapple from a can, but there's just nothing like fresh, juicy, ripe pineapple for this dish. I also have some holy shiitake. I have some shiitake mushrooms we're also gonna put in this dish. We also have some scallions. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a nonstick skillet like so. Hey, mommy. Yes. Look ready. And I'll put it on low. So Becca took those sauce ingredients, brought it to a boil, and now we're gonna simmer it. Now if Nicole Hersey Sane is still out there, she hired me to cater a bat mitzvah, and we served these this pineapple fried rice in miniature pineapples. It was so cute. Remember that? Yeah. That's right. Man, those are the days, okay? So I'm just gonna add to this hot oh, pan. Look. Oh, hey, Savoir. Hi, Tamalyn. Okay, I'm oh, just adding. Oh, May Chandra, tell them rice has to be cooked. Okay, May, thank you for keeping it real. May Chandra, uh, excellent tip. The best way to make fried rice is to use rice from the day before, leftover rice. So if you had Chinese takeout or Thai takeout, it's ideal because you can just take that from the fridge, stick it into your pan. And the reason we like to use leftover refrigerated rice is because the rice separates, the grains separate as you cook it, it doesn't stick together and get all mushy. Mom, can you turn this off? Yeah, you can turn it off. All right, so I'm just gonna break up the rice as we go. Is it true that breaking up is hard to do? Matthew wants to know if breaking up is hard to do. Well, I, I hope I never know that. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, so I'm just breaking up the rice and then I'm gonna add some light soy sauce. Now, I like light soy sauce because it has lower sodium. Rita, anybody else joining us? Yes, Dawn, no sex brand I could Hey, Dawn. And Jason Palin. Who was the last person? Jason Palin also just joined. Hi, Jason. Okay, we're just breaking up the rice, like so, okay? Now you could also use some cut up chicken, or you could throw some shrimp into here, or cut up grilled steak. Right. So fried rice is definitely ideal for Mimo leftovers. Mimo says, Matthew, you're killing me today. <laughs> Matthew will be performing every Tuesday and Thursday <laughs> live here from our cabin in Lake Arrowhead. Okay, right. All right. now I'm gonna add our scrambled eggs. I'm gonna break those up along with our peas. Thank okay. you, Becca. Ooh, and then, ooh, okay, some, what's this? Pineapple. Fresh pineapple, so juicy and delicious. And then? Mushrooms. Our mushrooms, very good. You can be creative and use whatever fridge, I mean whatever fridge, whatever, whatever vegetables you have on hand from your fridge. Like sometimes I like to cut up some red bell pepper. Sometimes I cut up some, uh, Blanche green beans or asparagus. What else? What else do you guys like in your fried rice? Pepper? Pepper? Can you say peppers? <laughs> yes, I did say peppers. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, now. Oh, now Hollywood 469 says, Matthew, you have got yolks. Matthew does have yolks. <laughs> oh, okay. What? Now I'm adding some scallions. 
Okay, now Becca, I would like you to season with some salt and pepper. Good job. Now sometimes people like to saute some ginger or garlic or shallot, then add all the ingredients. If you'd like a Thai version of this dish, if you'd like a Thai version of this dish, I would use half fish sauce and half soy sauce, and then I would also add some fresh herbs, like some cilantro, some mint, some Thai basil. Super delicious. You could also add a handful of bean sprouts at the end if you wanted to, because you can't always find bean sprouts. I couldn't find any today, so that's why I don't have any. <laughs> okay, so I would like Becca to go ahead and take that delicious sauce you made, Oh, yeah. And can you squeeze some into here? Yeah. You got that? All right. Well, Becca gets the sauce ready for our two appetizers. I'm going to take our fried rice, and I'm just going to place it into the pineapple. Doesn't that look good? Rita. Rita. Yes, ma'am. Do you love it? I really do love it. And it, you just inspired me because I have a cut of cauliflower rice in the freezer. Oh, excellent. Yes, call it, this is a great dish for cauliflower rice because as we know, cauliflower rice can be somewhat bland, but this just adds so much flavor because cauliflower is going to absorb everything around it. So, Have you ever had call me maybe rice? Call me maybe rice. <laughs> is that your comment or one of our viewers? Okay, so we're just going to garnish with some delicious- You could call me flour. I thought you'd do call me maybe. <laughs> All right, here's, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous, you guys? And where are these recipes available, Rita? Well, they're all available on chefkatiechin.com. Yeah, and guess what, you guys? The recipes are also available in my cookbook, Everyday Chinese Cookbook, 101 Delicious Recipes from My Mother's Kitchen. If you're watching and you're from Minnesota, you know my mother was Leanne Chen, so this book honors her memory. So. All the recipes available in this book, but we're giving one away today to a lucky winner that comments, okay? So make sure you guys comment. All right, this is my Chinese cookbook. You know, Becca's really becoming a professional chef because she has to taste as she's cooking. <laughs> That's a very, that's a very, what chefs have to do. You have to check the flavor. She's, she's making sure that it's okay. That's right. Well, Several times we, over. We usually make these dishes with her mouth open. thinking that we're going to have the leftovers for our dinner, but then by the time dinner time rolls around, Beck has eaten half of everything, so we don't have anything left, but that's okay. That's, that's a good sign, I guess. All right, along with the cookbook we're giving away today, we're giving away a sampler pack of tea drops which are these amazing organic tea discs that just dissolve in hot water. So they don't require a tea bag. They're like tea magic. They're so delicious today. Beck and I are enjoying some citrus ginger tea drops iced tea. So please check that out. Okay, now where's the sauce? Let's recap, okay, you guys? Jeannie Chin wants to know, how's the rice taste, Becca? Oh, good. What was that? Good. Hi, How good was it? All right, what, did, what was our lesson that we learned today, Becca? At first, if you don't succeed, fry, fry again. <laughs> fry, fry again. So what I usually teach people is test the oil to make sure it's not too hot or make sure it's hot enough. I learned a lesson. I skipped the step, so we had to start over. But it worked out, right? It worked out. So again, let's take a look. Ooh, delicious. Coconut shrimp, crimp, delicious mm. crab rangoon. Ooh, May says, oh, thank you. One of the best Chinese cookbooks. Easy, delicious, doable. Thanks, May. Oh, she says to you she wants some. Okay, here's our delicious lime ginger sauce made with apricot preserves. We all have some jam in our fridge, right? So, Becca, do you want to try a shrimp? I want to see she wants a crab. Okay, Becca's going to try the crab rangoon while yeah. I'm gonna try ha. our delicious coconut shrimp. You guys, a taste of the tropics, hold on. Mmm. <laughs> Crispy, sweet. Mmm, I love the texture of the coconut. And we have a delicious tang from the lime ginger sauce. So delicious, so yummy. You can obviously serve 
the coconut shrimp as an entree if you wanted to, not just as an appetizer. And then, last but not least, <laughs> our wonderful pineapple fried rice. As you can see, you can make this recipe in under five minutes with things you have in your refrigerator. Again, if you don't have fresh pineapple, you could use frozen pineapple or canned pineapple, but I really do recommend using a fresh pineapple because there's really nothing like it. Hi, Minchin, Bergen, thanks for joining <laughs> us today. Okay, let's just have one last taste. Mmm. Mmm. That's really good. Pineapple fried rice never disappoints you guys. I just wanted to remind you, we just have a few seconds left before we give away a copy of my cookbook and our tea drops. So Becca's gonna count us down. We hope you, we see you guys this Friday. We're doing another installment of Learn to Love Your Lockdown Leftovers. One grilled steak, three different ways. Until then, we wish you an amazing week. Happy cooking. I'm gonna count down Becca. Don't forget to look for the recipes on ChefKatieChin.com. Are you guys ready? 10, nine, nine eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy cooking! Bye! Bye, everybody! Thank